to this evening's Yakshagana ballet performance by the troupe Yakshaganga, who have been trained at the Yakshagana Kendra in Udupi under the able guidance of Dr. Kota Shivram Karat, who is here with us this evening. I shall request Dr. Pratipa Agarwal, who is the director of the Natya Shod Samstan, to, uh, to say a few words on the institution and on Dr. Karat. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for us to have Dr. Shivram Karant with us this evening. I welcome him, the members of his troupe, and you all who are present here on this occasion. I don't need to say much about Natya Shod Sansthan because the people who are here, they know about our activities, a research institute which is working for the documentation of theatre basically in our country. And uh, we always like to have people with us, the eminent people who have contributed in their field. Now, so far as Dr. Karanth is concerned, I don't know how one can describe about his work, about his achievement, about his contribution to the field of literature and the dance, especially the Yakshagan form. Because he has a versatile, he's a versatile genius, he has worked in different fields with equal, uh, you may call it skill, with equal capability. Dr. Shivram Karanth is a distinguished Indian author writing in Kannad, a novelist, playwright, lexicographer, encyclopedist, <coughs> and educational thinker. Karanth's manifold achievements brought him the coveted Gyanpet Literary Award in 1978. Dr. Karanth is also an eminent researcher and critic of the Yakshagan Theater. His Yakshagan Bayalata, a pioneering research work on the total theater of Yakshagan, won for him the Sahitya Academy Award in 1958, besides the Bronze Medal of International Dance, the Archives of Stockholm. There are more than 25 other prestigious awards and honors conferred on him by different reputed societies and universities from all over India. A fellow of the Sangeet Natak Academy, Karanth is the founder member of the Yakshagan Kendra at UDP, established in 1971. While a votary of tradition who has done much to preserve it, Dr. Karanth is not averse to innovation in our traditional theatres. His Yakshagan ballets, which he prefers to call creative extension of tradition, have been performed in 60 centres all over India and have helped bring Yakshagan to national attention. His writings, numbering around 500, include novels, poems, short stories, science fiction, encyclopedias, ballets, and plays. Many of these have been also translated in other Indian languages. Now you can well understand how difficult it is to talk about a person like this. Not only that, he has been painting also. He sings, he dances, he is a composer, and he has definitely given a new dimension to Yakshagan, 
Now what new dimension he has given that he himself will talk to you. Now it's a great honor for Nateshot Sansthan to have him with us and to get an opportunity to pay our respects and regards to him. I now request Shri Khalid Chaudhuri to garland him. Jai Shri, take over please. Sri Khalid Chaudhary is an eminent musicologist and a senior member of the Naftashot Sansthan. May I also request Dr. Manjushri Takesharkar, who is one of the most famous choreographers of contemporary Indian dance styles, to felicitate Dr. Shivram Khan. Before I request Dr. Shivram Karant to say a few words, may I, with Pratipadi's permission, uh, say a few things. One, that Dr. Karant has often been mistaken for Einstein <laughs> and has been stopped. And uh, I think Dr. Manjushri Chakishwarka remarked on his resemblance, and Dr. Karant told us about this. But the other great news is that last year he was awarded the Pampa Prashashti Award, which is similar in importance and in prestige to the Gyanpeet Award. This award is given by the Karnataka State. So he was the recipient of that last year also. May I now request this great personality to tell us of his achievements and how he's gone about doing them. Dr. Kari. Or should I get the mic here? No, no. <laughs> Friends, let me first of all thank you for this happy welcome on behalf of the Natya Sanshodhan Association. <coughs> Since Half an hour later, you have a production of mine wherein I have dabbled in one of the traditional arts of South Canada. Well, let me tell a few words as to how I stumbled into this art. My interest in the beginning was not totally Yakshadana. I used to see the place and get fascinated but the attraction was the commercial theatre of Karnataka. We had some troops from Mysore, from Dharwar, which used to play during my young days in the town called Kundapur. Once a year, a company from Dharwar side would come, or company from Mysore state would come. The Mysore state companies like A.V. Vardachars, you will have good actors, and will give us pleasant Karnataki songs. Whereas the North Karnataka people, by the influence of the Maharashtra theater, used to provide us with numerous Marathi songs or adaptation of the classical Hindustani music. So I fell in love with it and translated one of Gadkari's novels, and I was then just introduced to music from the stage and began to write songs for the place that I did and I spent practically up to 1930 certain types of experiments like this. Then all at once my elders in Puttur wanted to celebrate Navaratri, these Dasara days for a few years. 
10 days were there before me and every day we wanted to show something new. This gave me chance to dabble in these things. For one or two days you would ask the professional Yakshagana people to give a prose performance and for one or two days I would like to experiment on something. Something like this, India, past and present. I would sing the tale of Indian glory and from the early times people would come and in a tableau form move about. Then I used to make them talk and so on. And one or two days I thought, this Yakshagana farm has been attracting foreigners who used to come and see. I thought, why not you take up Yakshagana as such? I took one hour place of Yakshagana and in my own way. I never imitated their costumes or anything. I borrowed the drummer and the Bhagavat and the songs. And on the stage, I presented a dance of my own. And the costume was more adaptable, probably second-rate imitation of Javanese costumes. With this, I went on. And in 1936, for the sake of a school, I took up a young, young trip to Bombay and he gave a performance in the Opera House and Kawashi Jangir Hall with bits of my own creative dances with Hindustani music, this nature charmer and so on, or night and day, so many similar themes with only one hour dance of Yakshagana songs plus drum different costume and different costume uh, uh, de deliberations. This I then called, I didn't want to be cursed by my Yakshagana people, I called Kinnarandratya, gave a different name. The sin that I am coming today the, was, if I had adopted that, I would have saved myself so much of criticism. Then afterwards, then I took up seriously because what is it that attracts outsiders in Yakshagana? First of all, it is a costume, a play of fantasy, wherein we have not met gods at anywhere. We used to bring gods there and all these things. When you see in the ordinary professional stage, those gods are so tame. Here Yakshagana gods are so lively because it is fantasy creation. And then when I was producing these songs of Kichikavadha or Indra, Indra Kelaka, I used to take these songs and the Bhagavad would sing it, the potentiality of Yakshagana music, where words and emotions combine and in the fewest terms can dive you deep into any emotion was there. From then on, I began to find out, do some research work in a number of ragas that have taken place and try to train up my own way of presentation of Yakshagana. That way I had to do a lot of research work about the number of ragas. There were about 150 Yakshagana ragas used in 200 plays, two centuries old. When we found out how many ragas are remembered, I could only say the Bhagavat knew about 30 ragas. You have Raga Nepali, you have Raga Gurjari, you have got Raga Diwali, Kore, and so many things. With the friends, one of the friends he is having the one in here, a Hindustani musician and a Karnataki musician because I know very little of classical music, even their names I don't know. So what ragas still survive, what they do not. When I go, went on to collect these songs, I found it was a rich mind. There is no music to me comparable to Yakshagana. So far as thought content, emotional content, and the use of the raga. My whole attitude later on has been form and content. Your scholarship, technicality doesn't appeal to me at all. Why do you talk? If you have something to say, talk. Why do you sing? If you have something to communicate, sing. Not for the sake of a raga. So on this experiment, I began to do, and in the process, from 1950 onwards, I took up professional actors, trained them in my mode of presenting the play. The costumes became traditional costumes. 
presentation was different because my interpretation of a song is not in terms of laga, footwork or anything. What does this song say? What does this emotion communicate? What does, what do the text is? In this way, nearly for 40 or 50 years I have been going on, trying to train a group. And in the final position, the problem was this. You have got the stage. Stage is a background where various colored characters are standing. It's a piece of painting. In terms of painting and harmony of colors, do the costumes suit? Do the arrangements suit? So choreography began to enter in these things to make relevant presentation of a group. Choreography had to be developed. Costumes have to develop. Yakshagana has rich in costumes, very costly. You know how decorating is Tirupati Timappa himself. So many crores of rupees of diamonds and all that. The sense of ornament is to totally lost to us in terms of you have got bangles from here to here, ornaments, garlands, everything, heap. The value counted to us more than the aesthetic perception of colors and then this harmony. So one by one, I had to tackle these subjects, choreography, costume, the limitation of dress, that it doesn't hinder someone, and many things have been forgotten. We had to, in the old costume dramas, an ordinary woman with black sari would come and get into a fantastic Rama or Lakshmana because they want to please the audience. The female role was used for pleasing the audience. So this way, I have been looking at it and trying to see what you could convey. And all the enthusiasm comes because of the songs composed there in very simple words and very effective words. This made me take it up very seriously. Before I took those things, I had dabbled in puppetry, shadow plays, ten different types of plays. Then afterwards I gave them a holiday and confined myself to this play. Naturally the result you can see today and I need not dwell upon it. There are, besides today's play, tomorrow, Abhimanyu, and the day after, Nal Damayanti. While everyone leaves the stage, I shall take those few minutes, by the time everything gets organized, to tell you all, once again, the story of Panchavati. But the reason for my telling it to you again is because every time there are subtle things added or subtracted from the stories of these epics. So if I can request Dr. Patibhagarwal to conduct Dr. Karan to the audience. For the next, today's and the next two days' performances, the entire proceedings, are being recorded by the Sangeet Natak Academy Delhi for their archives. <clears throat> Today's story, Panchavati, describes or tells of the travails that followed drama 
and his wife Sita with his brother Lakshmana when they were banished to Panchavati because of the oath that Rama's father had to keep to one of his wives. Rama, Sita and Lakshmana are obviously leading an idyllic life and into this forest strays Ravana's sister Sulpanakha along with her brother Kara. She gets the smell of human flesh and being cannibalistic she follows her nose and spies Rama and his godlike form. She's totally enamored of him and wants him to marry her. Rama excuses himself of his dubious honor, claiming that he's already married to Sita. But he asks her to find out if his unmarried brother Lakshmana will have her. Surpanaka now approaches Lakshmana, but Lakshmana asks her to go back and get his elder brother's permission. Rama then writes something on Surpanaka's back, and when Lakshmana reads that message, he cuts off Surpanaka's nose. This part up to here will form the first part of the play today, after which there will be a 10 minute interval. When you come back, you will see Sur Surpanaka in seething rage with her face disfigured, complaining to her brother Ravana about her treatment at the hands of the two brothers and perhaps to incite some kind of revenge, she speaks of the great beauty of Sita and perhaps encourages her brother to go in search of that wife of Rama. Ravana, encouraged by and totally enamored of the very beauty of Sita, even though it's complete hearsay up to now, decides to go and kidnap Sita. Along with his uncle Maricha, disguised as the golden deer, they go to the forest where Maricha entices Rama away from Sita. And then when Rama is about to kill him, using the voice of Rama, he shouts for his bad brother Lakshmana. When Lakshmana refuses to go because Rama has told him not to leave Sita alone, Sita forces him to leave her. At this point, Ravana appears in the guise of a mendicant and asks for alms, and Sita unwittingly crosses the Lakshman Rekha, which Lakshmana had drawn as her safeguard. While Ravana scurries away with Sita, he is challenged by the great bird Jatayu. The Jatayu puts up a valiant fight, but is mortally wounded. Sita blesses him and asks him to stay alive till Rama should come upon him and let him know what has happened to her. Rama and Lakshmana return and finding Sita not there, they set out in search for her, come across Jatayu, the dying bird, who tells them of Sita's plight and how he had tried to fight and rescue Sita. And after saying this, Jatayu dies. Rama blesses him and gives him moksha. So Panchavati is basically the story of Sita Haran and Jatayu Moksha. This is being performed by the members of the troupe Yaksha Ranga, who have been trained, as I said, at the Yaksha Kendra in Udupi 
which is run, the director of which is Dr. Kota Shivram Karan. The cast will be introduced to you later at the end of the play because they wear such fabulous makeup, so it would be nice to know who was what. But I shall announce it also at the beginning. Rama is being played by Haradi Mahabala Ganiga, Lakshmana by Sri Sanjeeva Suvarna, Sita by Sri Krishnamurti Urala. All female characters are played by males. Sur Surpanakha by Sri Cherkadi Madhavanayak. Maya Surpanakha, that is the beautiful Surpanakha, by Ganesha Nayak. Ravana by Sri Yalampali Vithal Achari. Khara, Sri Umesha. Maricha by Shashikant Bhatt, Sanyasi by C. Pratisha, The Golden Deer by Bhasava Marakala, and Jatayu by Sri Umesha. As you all have just heard from Dr. Karan, music plays an exceptionally important role in Yakshagana. I shall here announce the names of the musicians who again will be introduced to you on stage at the end of the program. On the violin is Sri A.V. Krishnamachar. There are two Bhagavatas, they are the singers, Sri Chandra Hasa Puranik and Sri Kodavaru Sudhir Rao. On the Maddale, which is a kind of percussion instrument, Sri Ananta Padmanabha Pathak. And on the chanda, on the chande, is Sri Gajanara Bhandari. On the saxophone is Sri Sadashiva Devadiga. The direction and choreography are by Dr. Kota Shivram Karan. Ladies and gentlemen, Panchapati. Narada di muni valdi 
Thank you. 
बारी बारी के वही आवास में बारी बारी के वही आवास ने बारी बारी के वही आवास ने Thank you. 
Oh, 
ಕಾಪತ್ತಿಯ ವ್ರತ ನಿನಗೆ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಚಾರಿತ್ವ ಇಲ್ಲ ತಮ್ಮನಿಗೆ ಕಲ್ತೆ ಗುರುತು ವಾತನಿಗೆ ಪಾಲಿಸಯ್ಯ ವಿವೇಕದಿ ಅನುಜ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಣಗೆ ಚಡುರೆ ಬಾ 
ಮುದಳಲು ಜನಗೆ ಕಾಮಾರಿ ನಾಯಕಿಗೆ ವಿಮಲ ಕೋಮಲ ಗಾತ್ರ ಶರ್ವಾಣಿಗೆ ಸರ ಜನ್ಮ ಮಾತಿಗೆ ಶಂಕರನ ಪ್ರೀತಿಗೆ ಹರಿಯ ನೀರಿ ಮೆರೆದ ಮೂಕಾಂಬಿಕೆ ಸುವರ್ಣ 
Thank you all with your friends tomorrow.